when you really throw yourself full, full heartedly into your craft, uh, whatever that happens to be, there is going to be an, an endless capacity for what can be done within that. My name is Erin McAtee. I'm an artist and an event organizer in New York City. I do a lot of work with other artists here, particularly in the Catholic community, and I'm just very passionate about providing community and encouraging fellowship amongst other artists in the city so that we're able to share our craft and also provide spaces to share our faith and pursue that equally uh, to our crafts. So as an artist, my work mostly deals with drawing and manifests through printmaking. I do a few different methods of printmaking, such as woodcut and etching, and I also do a lot of painting. Recently, I've been working a lot with oil paints and have been able to pursue this craft in my new studio, where I work in Harlem through a parish here called Annunciation Church. I start with a sketch. This actually is just an image that came to me in prayer on the feast of Mary, mother of the church. I was just praying and had this image of Our Lady with, with this kind of church structure within her body. And so I have been really wrestling with that. I wanted to make it into either a woodcut or a painting, but wasn't really sure until recently. So I decided to go with woodcut and just did the drawing on the block um, in pencil. And now I'm just outlining it with charcoal so that I can kind of map out where I want there to be thicker outlines or shapes um, because with woodcut, you're really kind of carving a large stamp out of wood. And so keeping that in mind, like I don't, I don't want super fine pencil lines when I'm carving. I want more bold, dynamic lines and shapes um, so that when I'm carving, it makes it a little easier. And I think that the image that I'm trying to create needs a little bit more of that punch. Like it needs some darker, darker and thicker lines to really make the image pop. Yeah, so I'm just kind of doing my outlines and then I'll spray it uh, with a fixative so that the charcoal doesn't go everywhere um, while I'm carving and then I'll start uh, carving. Really everything began for me out of the kitchen of a woman named Bernice, a woman named Bernice who lived in my neighborhood growing up. I would bike over to her home during the summers as I was growing up as a preteen and she would teach me how to do watercolor painting. And this was big for me because the way that Bernice spent time with me, the way that she patiently guided me through painting and um, just the simplicity of the whole experience, her heart for hospitality and ability to just open up her home to someone like me, uh, just kind of a punk kid growing up in the Midwest um, who had this interest in art but didn't really have a guide for it. All these things inspired me to pursue my own craft, uh, to pursue painting more seriously and to also get into other forms of art as I grew up and went to college and entered my young adult years. And her witness also gave me a model for how to intentionally be with others, how to share beauty, how to share art um, in a way that was helpful. There was just so much about this, this uh, experience that was inspiring and uplifting to me as a young artist and kind of gave me the tools to not only pursue my own craft and to feel really supported in that, but also gave me a model for how to approach my own communities that I would live in in the future, how to uh, encourage other artists around me and how to be able to sit with people to, to share experiences related to art and culture in a meaningful way. So my advice for anyone who 
is wrestling with desires to pursue something creatively or even having a creative block is to just persevere through that. There's gonna be times where, we're, where you're really wrestling with something as small as what color do I pick for this painting? How is this gonna overlap with the rest of, of the, the paint within the canvas? Or something as large as can I actually pursue my craft full time and in a meaningful way that will benefit not only myself, but my, my local community and those around me. There, there's gonna be those moments of just, of anguish at times, but also moments of joy, kind of wrestling with those things because when you really throw yourself full, full heartedly into your craft, uh, whatever that happens to be, there, there is going to be an, an endless capacity for what can be done within that. And as a Christian, I firmly believe that when we are pouring ourselves wholeheartedly into what, whatever God is asking us to do in the moment, there, there will be an endless, endless boundaries for, for us to, to just glorify him through the gifts that we have. There, there's just an endless capacity for him to work when we say yes, and we throw ourselves into that without distraction, without negative thoughts, um, or sometimes I hear this, this phrase, imposter syndrome, people that decide to pursue creative uh, things all of a sudden feel like they're an imposter, like they're not meant to do that, or they don't they don't fully know how to do what they're doing. But I think that's a good thing to wrestle with and to keep asking yourself, asking the Lord, asking the people around you who care about you and want to see you thrive. Um, yeah, wrestle with these things, get them out there, don't just keep them inside, uh, but persevere through that wrestling. Uh, because your heart will never be satisfied, uh, will always be restless if, if you're not able to just nail that down and really give your, your, your whole self to whatever that project is or whatever that creative path is that you want to pursue. I think that creativity has to come from an open heart and an open mind. As, as you're walking through your day, what are the things that really strike you? Um, what are those moments who are those people, those conversations, those images, a word or sound or part of nature that just really hits you and strikes you in a way that, that kind of resounds with you. There's something there that can really inspire us to create. Within my recent work, I've been most inspired by the mystery all around me. Uh, this might be from daily encounters, daily experiences, just walking around the city and seeing things that really strike me or running into a friend or a stranger on the street and exchanging a conversation. Um, sometimes there will be something from that conversation that really sticks with me, either in wonder, in joy, or in sadness. Uh, that, that moment will really resound with my heart. Or maybe I will all see something within the liturgy at Mass that I've seen throughout my whole life, just being born a cradle Catholic. But for whatever reason, on this particular day, this moment within the Mass really hits me. Something clicks and I start to understand a little bit more of the symbolism within the beauty of, of the, the sacrifice of the Mass. Or maybe this is uh, another moment, I'm just walking around a museum and see something that really captures my eye, captures my heart, and I find a, a favorite new artist, and I start to look at their work, and that inspires me. All these things are, are just entry points. They're signposts that point me to a deeper mystery that's actually being enacted all around me all the time. I find myself constantly trying to de de just dive deeper into what is this? Why, why are these things really hitting me? And why am I wrestling with them in my heart? I wrestle with this sense of wonder that comes from just being an open uh, person with an open heart, ready to receive the experiences and the encounters around me each day. And I take that 
I take it into my artwork, I start to sketch. Uh, drawing is a very important part of my process and the foundation of everything that I do. And I take it to prayer. I love contemplative prayer. I often sit with these experiences and these, these mysteries that I'm discovering uh, in just time of silent contemplative prayer with the Lord. and and wrestle with, with these things that way. So it's kind of, for me, this combination of art making and prayer. And those two kind of go hand in hand within my art process. So within a lot of my recent work, I have this show right now up at Annunciation Parish in Harlem called Mystagogia. And this show is about this Greek word, mystagogy, which means revelation of mysteries. And this draws from a process of instruction that was started back in the early church. When people would come into the church, the newly baptized would be given an extra set of instruction for 50 days after Easter called mystagogia, where uh, the early church fathers would kind of lead these new converts into more of an understanding of the mysteries of our church and kind of take them deeper into the sacraments that they had just received. And I really love that idea. I love thinking about this word, mis mystagogia. I love thinking about my, my life and my art making process as an ongoing mystagogia of my life. And so through my work right now, as I'm seeking to kind of wrestle with these mysteries that have come up in my own life and within the church and within the world around me here in the city, uh, I've been working with more oil paint. Uh, I've been really trying to use these uh, art media, um, like charcoal, pen and ink, pencil, oil paint, um, printmaking methods like woodcut as a tactile means of going deeper into these mysteries and revealing them to, to the world. And so I hope that through this work, people feel invited to dive into the mysteries with me, to dive into the mysteries that I've been representing, that I've been wrestling with, but to also dive deeper into the mystery hidden within their, their own lives. To, to really feel invited into the transformation that takes place within our hearts when we are open to the mystery around us.